Edit Wrestling Observer Live is on the air and about to be bastardized to the fullest. I'm Mike Sempervivi here with you for the next hour talking professional wrestling and mixed martial arts as we do every single day, seven days a week. And however you're joining me today, tune in iHeart, American Forces Radio, over the air affiliates, sportsbyline.com, SiriusXM via podcast, or streaming video on twitch.tv. I'd just like to say thank you. I'd like to thank all of you in advance, too, for joining former MLW champion former UFC fighter and current New Japan Lions breaker, Filthy Tom Lawler and I, this Saturday night, twitch.tv backslash F4W video. We'll be live about 15 minutes or so after UFC 251. The pay-per-view goes off the air, but we will definitely be here. But before we get there, we got a lot to get through today. Of course, headed up by the Wednesday night shenanigans that took place, AEW and Fighter Fest, NXT, and the Great American Bash surprise i've got thoughts on the show i'm sure you do as well and with no boss man here today we are back to using the sports byline phone line so make dom work 1-800-878-PLAY 1-800-878-7529 good night for both shows i thought it was a great night for AEW. if you are an AEW fan I'm not sure what else you could possibly have wanted out of last night. NXT, eh, there were some ebbs and flows here and there. But really, if you're an NXT fan, I don't know how you can really complain about too much either when you had a main event like that. And there's a tons of, of other stuff that's going on as well. New Japan is going to be back in Osaka this coming weekend, running at about 30% capacity. Uh, there's more sad news, too, unfortunately, coming out of Japan about what life was like inside Terrace House for Kanakamura. Uh, we'll probably get into that, plus a, a bunch of wackiness that's uh, uh, taking place in the world of the UFC as we get closer to Abu Dhabi on Saturday night. Not only positive COVID tests, but Mike Perry had a, a very Mike Perry moment at a bar last night in Texas. And hey, Nick Gage is on Cameo. I'm serious. After the break, let's get to it. Mike Sempervivi be back with you. Wrestling Observer Live. No Brian Alvarez today. He'll be back tomorrow. Actually, on the road to the beach, as you heard yesterday. But he said he'll be back with a vengeance, so you got that. We're here with you seven days a week. Always a tomorrow here at Wrestling Observer Live. 24-7, you can find us on Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, at Sports Byline USA, at Semper Vivi, at Mid-Atlantic Pod, if you love pro wrestling. And uh, since uh, July has, has begun, that's a that's a twitter page you just might want to bookmark i think you'll enjoy that if you like the pro wrestling but that doesn't matter right now what does matter is aew and nxt last night and i do want to hear from you either through the the chat on twitch uh on twitter at semper vivi although i probably won't be checking that much as uh I uh, will remain focused on our Twitch homies and homets that support us here every day. And, you know, you work in the phones as well, too. 1-800-878-PLAY, 1-800-878-7529. Love repeating that number over and over again. That's so Crash can remember it. He has trouble with that one. So I just want to make sure he's good with it. But, uh, yeah, hey, look, AEW, Chris Jericho last yesterday uh, or leading into this on Twitter, I guess, hyped up that in his 25, 30 years of wrestling, he has never had a better match than he had with Orange Cassidy. One of his one of his greatest matches of all time. And well, I, I can call shenanigans on that. You know, there's there's Hiroshi Tanahashi and Omega and Naito and you know Shawn Michaels and this guy named The Rock and Rey Mysterio and even in his own company, John Moxley. But you know what? Didn't have to be any of those matches. It had to be the match to make Orange Cassidy look good in the main event of a show that was going up against heavy competition on the other channel. And even if it wasn't going to have heavy competition on the other channel, there were going to be people that were going to be thinking, you know what, Mike Tyson's going to be out there. Rashad Evans and his new haircut is going to be out there. The Gooch could make an appearance. There's always some sort of shenanigans. What will the best friends do? What will happen with the proud and powerful? What kind of wackiness are we going to get? And we got no wackiness. We got a damn good wrestling match where Chris Jericho made Orange Cassidy a bigger star in AEW than he already was. Now, is Orange Cassidy a bigger star to you, the, the fan out there listening? Uh, I guess that's up to you. Uh, by this point, 
I think the people that are going to come around to Orange Cassidy already have. I'll just go ahead and point to the match that he had before with Brian on WrestleMania weekend. The audio is up for free on the YouTube page, if I'm not mistaken, an interview I did with Drew Cordero talking about Orange Cassidy when I asked him, what don't people get about this guy? Because I, I don't know. The, there's lots of gimmicks in wrestling and personalities that I just don't get right off the bat and, and, and may never warm up to. But Orange Cassidy was one I just I don't know what it was. So I'm fully in the tank for him as it is. But, you know, his explanation was just real simple. You know, he lulls you into a false sense of security and then pulls off some great stuff. You know, people forget that this dude was fire ant and doing all sorts of crazy things in Chikara. You know, people forget about how, you know, people could talk about the hands in the pockets all that they want. And I actually, you know, Jim Cornette gave him the nickname Pockets. Uh, we actually, in my household, my son loves that nickname. I actually like it, too. So I call him Pockets. Sorry, Pockets and Jelly. Uh, I actually kind of like those nicknames. And the Pockets is great. Sticks his hands in his pockets, goes out, and people hate that. But then you see him dive through the ropes. Go ahead. You try that. You try that with, without your hands in your pockets. <laughs> have that body control people act like orange cassidy is just purely nothing but a clown and he's not and he was out there and he proved it again with chris jericho yesterday and i thought chris jericho did a hell of a job this is what chris jericho is supposed to do i wish he would have done it for sugar dunkington aka pineapple pete but he did it for jungle boy he did it for scorpio sky Adam Page, that didn't click as well as they wanted it to, but it's not throughout, and you know, Jericho's fault on that. But he did what he had to do, and he did a great job of it. And Kenny Omega and Adam Page are a fantastic team, and I don't that Mutt and Jeff tag team, the, you know, they, they even called back to the old. It was, it was, I don't, not a whole lot of people mentioned where Kenny Omega and Adam Page got the Jack Daniels milk, uh, bump at the bar, you know, that, that cheers at the bar. That was Michael Hayes and Kerry Von Eric in world class, you know, Michael with the, the glass of Jack, the bottle of Jack and Kerry Von Eric with the, the big gallon of whole milk, uh, that, uh, we found it out later on was probably laced with lots of things. But that's a story for a different time. But uh, they're fantastic together. And Adam Page needed what Kenny Omega could give him. And I know there's people out there that are just dying to see Kenny Omega back in the mix uh, as a singles performer putting on New Japan type of matches. But man, look at what he is doing for the people that are around him. And again, I will always admit that not I'm not always in the tank for Kenny Omega as a performer or, or really as a personality sometimes. Uh, I'm not trying to think about the cleaner gimmick. A lot of people may, uh, I guess I was on BTE this week. Uh, I don't want to think about those times. I hated when he stomped into New Japan with that cleaner gimmick. Couldn't stand it. Don't want to see that one return. But what I want to see every week is Kenny Omega making somebody better. And I was hoping that they would lead off the show last night with Private Party and Kenny Omega and Adam Page in the World Tag Team Championship match, and they did. And I thought that was the right decision to make. And everybody talked about how weak of a team Private Party was. That became a real talking point, really, across. I was really surprised how much of a talking point that became of, you know, they're really weak challengers. I guess, you know, they've actually been on, a, like, they've won five or six. I mean, it's not like they've been awful. I don't think they're portrayed. I don't think the portrayal of Private Party necessarily helps them all that much i don't know if i need to hear mark quinn have to to scream uh in the same in the way that he does taking chops i'm not i don't know if i'm all about that or not but like you know they looked really good last night and page and omega made them look really good so what more can you say to that i mean i thought that was a great way to open the show they go right into then what is a a hell of a cartoon match i mean this was a this was a, a personality-driven pro wrestling match with uh, Joey Janela and Lance Archer. And I thought Lance Archer, it was, Joey Janela is the perfect opponent. He's the perfect guy to get his ass kicked. And by his own admission, nobody is going to, he's not going to say that he's the greatest pro wrestler in the world. He is not Luthez, never is going to be Luthez. But, you know, Darby Allen, I think, has got far more of a, a upwardly mobile track that he can kind of make. And I worry about him killing himself sometimes. No offense to Joey, but I don't necessarily worry about that with him. I'm not worried about his arc to the top. What I want to see him is in matches like this. 
give him some wins every once in a while. But when it comes time to put over a monster like Lance Archer, I, I thought he did a hell of a job of it. And then you had the deal with Darby Allen, with Travis Pastrana. You know, I with Darby, I know a lot of people love some of the moves that he does. Uh, him being out for so long and not being on TV wrestling, I mean, I, I, um, you can't change somebody's personality. They are going to be who they are, and that what's that's what makes him a star. But you know, some of the moves that he tries to do, including the one that got himself hurt last time around, I mean, it just drives me nuts not to see him. And then, you know, more than anything else, that eight man tag team match last night was spectacular and i mean I, I i i how much nick jackson in phoenix doing that mirror double jump and then into the super frankensteiner insane i think it was was a pentagon who delivered the uh the 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 the, the, the flipping the canadian destroyer to outside of the ring i mean just an absolute spectacle of a match was that a was that a match of the year maybe not but if you take out the all of the cinematic presentation matches and just have a, a category for wrestling matches that are are double as spectacles, man, that was a spectacle and a half last night. I thought everybody looked fantastic, and I thought the quiet MVPs of that match were the Butcher and the Blade. And you forget how long Blade has been around and how good he is and how talented he is until you see him in a situation like that where he does he's not supposed to be the star he's supposed to be the enhancer and he made everybody around him look good and even better than they already are already got people calling on the phones we'll be right back wrestling observer live for vv today wrestling observer live thank you for joining me however you're doing it especially for all of you watching out there on twitch.tv backslash f4w video if you want to be a part of that just go to our front page and find out all the ways that you can join up including with your amazon prime subscription you can actually join up with us and and have a, a free way to subscribe to the 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 video site and even if you had to pay for it, which you should be paying for it, it's fantastic. You can do it that way. You can check out the archives on, on YouTube, F4W Video, just so many ways to to support us here. And you can support Filthy Tom Lawler and I after the UFC 251 show right here for subscribers. You're on Twitch.tv. The show should be up if it uh, clears uh, sensors, because uh, it does have to go through a process at this point. Uh, Tom and I cannot be trusted to do things on our own, so they have to run through several channels first, including going out to uh, Cannon Beach to make sure that Brian's okay with everything, which he will say he's got to hear and then will not listen to it, but uh, say that he did. And uh, well, that's enough of that. And as we've got plenty of better things to get into today that you can join me in doing 1-800-878-PLAY, 1-800-878-7529. Talked a little bit about AEW Fighter Fest. NXT last night, Great American Bash, night two. Not as stacked of a card, obviously, uh, but I thought it was still a really, I thought it was a really good show. And obviously the main event is was the, the lead horse in, in that. Adam Cole's, what, 400, what was it here? 403-day title uh, day reign comes to an end. Keith Lee, now your NXT heavyweight champion as well as North American champion. What happens to that North American title, I guess we'll have to see coming up here in the next several weeks. I thought they moved a lot of other things forward. Mercedes Martinez, not only when I saw she was getting a vignette, it's like, well, this is good. Mercedes is going to be coming back. That's nice. And then she goes out there and she just kills Santana Garrett. And I feel bad for Santana Garrett. I like her a lot, too. I thought they could have done at least a little bit of something with her. But uh, she she is out there usually to to lose and, and kind of look good doing it. So uh, Mercedes Martinez definitely looked good doing it last night. And I'm very happy to see her back in the, in the mix. Just another just another badass. And, you know, with Mia Yim losing to Candice LeRae last night, really in a – I was really surprised by that uh, with her losing. There's room for another badass to to be around, and Mercedes Martinez I, I think is great. Hopefully now that Robert Stone and Aaliyah seem to be uh, moving towards a feud with Shotzi Blackheart, maybe we can get Rhea Ripley back in the mix. I'm just – look, I just need more bad bitches uh, beating on each other in NXT. Io Shirai and Tegan Knox coming up next week uh, for the title. Uh, Rhea Ripley, Mercedes Martinez – 
please, Lord, send Shayna Baszler back down to NXT. The Hoss division that so many of us were hoping for at some point, now we just need to turn it in to the, the badass woman division and, and just have all of those women out there thumping and bumping every single week because I love those matches. And I was very happy to, to see Mercedes back. And again, with me losing, with, with Candice moving on, obviously Candice and Johnny, Johnny got a win over Swerve. I guess I'm okay with that because obviously they still want to move Johnny and Candace forward more, and they really need to. I'm not exactly sold on this. What, what, what is it? All heart, no soul, or whatever it is with Johnny and, and Candace. I, I don't know. You know, I, they've been pigeonholed in my mind for so long that even though they're being devious, I, I just. It, I'm going to have to try to warm up to this one. And, you know, Swerve didn't need the victory and, in fact, came out looking really, really good, you know, because the match was really, really good. Gargano was great at doing that. You know, Gargano being smaller than Swerve, too, helps. You know, what's Swerve? Like maybe six foot, six one. You know, he's tall, but he's not, you know, he's pretty lean. He's, you know, 190 pounds or whatever he is. But, you know, when you're in there against Gargano, it can make you look, you know, a lot bigger, obviously. And I thought he did a hell of a job there. So I thought that was good. I like Bronson Reed a lot. I wish Bronson Reed was a bad guy i wish bronson reed was a bad guy i know they want to push i guess you know he he's thick boy or whatever and he's got the australian accent and i don't have no idea why you want to push him as a good guy i like him as a monster i like the the thought of a partnership with him and uh, and stokely hathaway uh, you know it were uh uh, Malcolm Bivens. I, I liked when they would do uh, clips on, on on Twitter and on IG and things like that, videos, uh, shorts that uh, that Bivens would put out there. And I would love to see them together as a team. And I think you know he looked good against Tony Nese. I think there's there's room for a character like him, you know, to to be cheered, a big guy like that, you know. But I just I, him as a devious bad guy or him out there, you know, uh, with the hand of somebody uh, controlling him and, and promoting him and talking for him as he goes out there and lays waste to people. I kind of like that idea a little bit more. Uh, the six man, you know, with Brazango and, and Drake Maverick, uh, Drake Maverick, excuse me, and uh, Team Phantasma was okay. I, I thought that was an okay match, uh, you know, and, and then we had uh, Keith Lee and Adam Cole was the main event. We got a vignette on Cameron Grimes and Damien Priest and their feud, which I... I like both of those guys. I'm we got to see how it goes with Damian Priest. I'm not in love with him either as a as a good guy, and I'm not sure what's going to work here. We'll see. And I wish there were kind of there was some crowd reaction around to try to you know see how this is playing out because at least to me on TV it's eh, it's not doing a whole lot. Uh, it doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot of reaction, and that's not to bury punishment Martinez at all. It just doesn't seem like, you know, of all the things that happened on the show, there's not a whole lot of buzz coming out of it. But with that said, Cameron Grimes is fantastic. He has been fantastic for a long, long time. He's a guy whose character I just I kind of saw the top hat and everything at first and went, oh, God, what do we, you know, we got a broke-ass, you know, Black Crows fan. Like, what is this whole thing going to be? There's a guy left over from the Horde Festival, you know, coming out of the backwoods in North Carolina. I was wrong. You know, the, the Trevor Lee I liked. I wasn't sure about Cameron Grimes. I was wrong. Cameron Grimes has, has, taked, uh, has taken uh, his gimmick and, and his uh, personality that they have applied to him and, and truly made it his own. So he's done a, a hell of a job there. But that's enough of me rambling on about these shows. I want to hear what you have to say about them, too. 1-800-878-PLAY. Uh, unfortunately, Joe uh, dropped, so we're just jacking in Montana right now. Jack, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good, Mike. Thanks for asking. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the eight-man tag. Uh, in my opinion, th that was uh, the best match that has been in the pandemic era. I also want to say uh, I've always I thought this for a while, but uh, the eight-man tag reminded me. Uh, whenever the Young Bucks get on the uh, observer ballot, I feel that they are first, uh, whatever the term is, first ballot Hall of Famers. What do you think? I want to thank you very much for the call, Jack. I don't know about that. I I think a lot of their they're going to have the bonus of AEW, and depending on what happens with AEW, I think 
I think that's what's probably going to put him in sooner rather than later. Um, the, the voting, it's all going to depend on the voting block. We have gotten a lot of new voters, it seems like, in the last, and I've been voting on the Hall of Fame for, I'm not even sure how long it's been now, but it, since I have been voting on it, there has been a noticeable change in far more Japanese uh, and far more international voters seem to be in the mix, and the voting block seems to be getting younger as well, too. And we'll have to see. Wrestling-wise, as a team, man, you know, I, I'm. if you think about tag teams from the era, the Briscoe brothers, you know, are they a Hall of Fame tag team? Uh, the Young Bucks, they have, it's, if you include influence, and that's the thing, and influence doesn't necessarily get you in because Grand Hamada's not in. Ultima Dragon is, but, but like Grand Hamada's not. And sometimes people that are looked at for influence, another great example is, um, is, is Kiyoshi Tamura on the shoot style end, as well as, and I'm going to brain lock right now, not, not Hashmakov or, uh, but, uh, somebody help me out. Vulcan, Vulcan. So, you know, he's, he's another example of a guy with great influence who really, you know, helped promote a style and was, you know, the same way the Young Bucks have in, in their manic tag team matches and the the union of, you know, I don't know if it's Southern California wrestling. I don't know if you want to even apply a name to it or anything like that. But this melding of Lucha, this stepping into the indie era that we had in the early 2000s, I mean, all of this stuff coming together, I mean... You know, I don't know if there's who's a better example of all that. Who's a better example? They they've gotten the shirts that they've sold. They've made money. Uh, the 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 Cracker Barrel deal. When you think about how what they were able to do, how they were able to tap the young market and understand what was going on and place themselves in positions to to benefit from that and to exploit that and to benefit from that i mean they've done an incredible job so when you include those things even if you don't like their wrestling matches man it's kind of hard it's going to be really hard i think to kind of to go against them and i think if AEW fails miserably i think that's going to obviously hurt their chances I don't think AEW is going to hurt miserably and die a horrible death or anything like that. And even if they did, don't they get some credit for for taking things where they got to uh, to to get to this point to convince Tony Khan to to have get Tony Khan to believe in them to get Tony Khan to convince his father to just throw uh, wheelbarrows full of money and to get a show on TNT, you know, a major cable network, uh, one that had historically had Turner programming had pro wrestling on it. Uh, it's I don't know. You only get ten votes. Uh, you know, and, and they're going to come on the ballot, and I don't know if they'll be one of my ten. There's going to be a lot of people on that ballot that I voted for for a long time who haven't gotten in. But I can't say I won't vote for them either, but time will tell. You like Back on the show, Mike Semper maybe here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Dominic Jimenez behind the glass. Appreciating the music today, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for not playing Keith Lee or Happy Days. That really makes me happy. Brian likes that stuff. He'll be back tomorrow with a vengeance, he said. Jim Valley, I believe, too. Jim Valley will be here on Saturday. We always have shows. Sunday, 6 p.m. Uh, during the week, 3 p.m. On Saturdays, 1 p.m. And then always on demand some way, either at sportsbyline.com or uh, at wrestlingobserver.com. That's where you can find a lot of our stuff. And if you happen to be like staggering uh, upon us right now, as I am staggering through uh, this opening to this segment here, uh, you know, if you like the pro wrestling and such, you would love F4WOnline.com. And I believe it's, uh, I don't know how much it is a month now. Is it thirteen ninety nine a month, twelve ninety nine a month, whatever it is, it, it's worth $50 a month. It is, because not only do you get me, you get Filthy Tom Waller, you get Les Thatcher, who is celebrating his 60th year in the pro wrestling business. God bless him. He is a wonderful guy, and it is awesome. Antonio the Promised Thomas has got a show talking all sorts of sports. Josh Nason, Adam Summers, and by the way, Adam Summers and I will be doing a a new Big Audio Nightmare talking about the upcoming 
Osaka Dominion show and everything that's going to be shaking out here with New Japan coming up. I'm excited of all the possibilities here. I'd like to know what people think, too. If, if you're in the, the Twitch chat right now, uh, look, I'm saying it's evil. I have... Adam Summers was right. Like he had talked about Sonata, he had talked a little bit about Evil, the the possibility as well too. He's been the one that has been on the train on our show talking about how it's going to be Evil. You know, they're making it look like Sonata with all of his failings is going to be the one who ends up turning dirty on Naito, but it's going to be Evil. And we saw Evil go Evil last time about, and uh, I think he's going to get the uh, the victory, and then we get Evil and Naito, and and that's going to be awesome. But uh, all of that sort of stuff you can get over at WrestlingObserver.com. Got some stuff to get back in here today to do as well. I don't want to... I keep trying to avoid doing this, and I think I'm going to keep avoiding it for a little bit longer, but by the end of the show, I'm probably going to have to talk about this Hannah Kimura story. Uh, it was not talked about, I don't think, with Dave and Brian last night. I, I will will mention it here, but I, I wanted to go to the, the calls first. Um, there is a little bit of news, too, and this is this before I go to the calls, and because I just saw this, somebody had alerted me to it that Lana, if you had heard the show last night with Dave and Brian, uh, at the beginning they talked about the fact that Lana's mother, uh, she uh, let everybody know on Twitter, yesterday that she had tested positive for covid and is in the icu right now and is uh, asthmatic and is on oxygen and today uh, as it stands here four hours ago uh, she has now stated that her dad has tested positive for covid and that her parents never go outside so this is just mind-blowing and hoping to keep uh, you know, one wants everybody to keep her family in her prayer. So that is a really a it's a uh, a cold slap there, and and all the best to the the Perry family, and just a just a terrible gut wrenching situation there. But uh, hopefully, uh, we can turn the the tables back around here. Go to the go to the phone lines because I'm sure everybody wants to talk about the shows last night. Tony in Philadelphia. Tony, how are you? Mike, always good to hear from you, man. How you doing? Scats, how the hell are you? Are you drinking right now? Um, uh, I am not, but I should be soon because we got baseball coming back. Shout out to the Phillies and Nats here in Delaware. We should go to a game when we can someday. I'm all for that. We go to the vet or DC awesome. or we'll go to both. Make it a home and home. Absolutely. Yeah, before I get to my main point about the shows last night, of course Evil's going to turn on Sonata. His name is Evil. I knew that Sonata was going to be a future IWGP champ when I saw his promo when he beat Okada in the G1 last year. He just needs to work on his emotions a bit more. Like Dave said, he doesn't emote well, but I feel like if he can get that down, he could be a major like main event player in New Japan. But for the shows last night, people were arguing about how Jericho should have let Orange Cassidy beat him and call an audible. I disagree, and here's why. There's no fans there. When Brian brought up Mike Tyson on the show last night, something clicked in my head that I think they're waiting to put Orange Cassidy over Jericho when there is fans and have Mike Tyson play a role in the finish, costing Jericho possibly, maybe knocking him out, allowing Orange Cassidy to get the win. Because something like that with fans would put AEW over the top because you'd get that moment where you make a star, you get the celebrity involvement with Mike Tyson. And I feel like if you don't do that, with fans, you're wasting the moment. So I think Jericho winning when there was no fans is perfect because it sets up the eventual rematch. And I'd love to get your thoughts on that, man. Yeah, this guy's a, really, you know, with Orange Cassidy, he doesn't need to win every match, obviously, you know, because he is a personality. He doesn't need to hold titles or anything like that. But you want to make sure to, to keep him safe to keep him protected you don't want to you know keep butchering him over and over again and you know and they didn't do that with jericho Pac didn't do that with him either in fact he stood out and the guy you know putting out performances like that as long as he stays strong enough in people's minds where they still have an affinity for him in the same way that they do now he can pick up some wins against lower guys he can pick up some wins in tag matches he can take some l's in tag matches preferably not being the one that gets pinned but he can take L's that way so when it comes time where he has that big W by beating Jericho or beating this person or beating that person beating MJF say you know something like that 
it's just going to make the whole thing even bigger. And doing it in front of a crowd, obviously, is what you want to do, too, since, you know, it, it's an act that definitely needs a crowd. You know, he's a, he's a good TV personality as well, too. But when everybody is winding up with him, I mean, look, ambiance matters. You know, the fans matter. And AEW fans are incredibly loyal. They they know their role the same way that ECW fans knew their role. Uh, maybe sometimes uh, they went a little bit too, too far with it, of course. Uh, but, you know, they know how to enhance their show or what they, they feel is how to enhance their show. So, you know, to wait on giving him... Him that big W, uh, I would rather go ahead and do that. So that, that I'm I'm far much more on your uh, side of the board than those people that are uh, complaining over the fact that an audible should have been called or, or something like that. As if you know, Baba is sitting backstage and is telling Jumbo no, Masao is going to go over. I, I don't think Tony had to whisper in you know Aubrey's earpiece and you know tell Chris it, it's you know he's got to lay down now. You know, no, I thought the whole thing ended up. Perfect. And you still had Proud and Powerful out there that needed to get chased away. You still had them out there beating on Orange, and Orange pushed his boys back. He was the hero throughout the whole night, and he had a bunch of stuff playing against him, and it's a bunch of stuff that you can add into the story next time around when he faces Chris Jericho because... He's going to face Chris Jericho again. How would he not? At some point down the line, because why would you not want to see that? Go back to the phone lines now. Uh, had uh, some issues hearing who this was, uh, but we believe they're in Staten Island. Staten Island, hello. That was Larry King. Yeah, hi, Mike. It's, it's Ken from Staten Island. Hey, man. How are you today? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, yeah, I was just calling about Nyla Rose's storyline with the manager, because I think there's a rumor online that Vicky Guerrero might be the manager, but I came up with a better idea. I want to see what you think of it. Awesome yeah. Kong, because Nyla is essentially doing the same gimmick, only it's she's much younger than Awesome Kong, and I, I think it makes more sense to have a manager who has in-ring experience, like they're doing with Tully Blanchard and Taz and the other people, So as opposed to just someone who's a mouthpiece like Vicky Guerrero, and I also think Vicky would take the spotlight away, kind of like how some people complain about Taz with Brian Cage, but I think Austin Kong would be good just to even just stand there and just be a force just by seeing her. Ken, I thank you very much for the call. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that with Austin Kong because I, unless she is, you know, going to officially be retired and come out there and say that I'm done with this, and you know, I'm only, you know, you see me on Glow, but that's it. I'm done with this because otherwise. I don't. I, otherwise, I'm not real sure if she's the best fit, and I'm not sure if Vicky Guerrero's the best fit either. Uh, I, I'd like, you know, Vicky Guerrero. I like a lot, and I think she can have some place on the show. I don't know if it's every week out there as a manager or not. Um, I, I, I'm not sure about that one, and I'm not even sure about giving Awesome Kong or uh, Nyla Rose a manager. I'm just not sure about that. And if they are going to give her one, I think it needs to be somebody. I want to see her with a Gary Hart type of character or somebody like that. I just, th those options, I don't love them. Now, Awesome Kong being brought in to work, uh, with her to, to, to teach her how to work as a, as a, as a, as a bigger woman, you know, out there. I mean, the, the, always facing smaller women is what Awesome Kong did her entire career, you know, and that's experience is what the women's division in AEW desperately needs desperately needs and i think you know last week when we were talking about the match with sheeta and penelope ford I, I i things went too left in the conversation that i was having with brian but you know because my issue is that when you give when you give somebody so much you know with, with so little experience and you constantly give everyone something then nobody's got nothing. And I understand that Christy Janes is very pretty, and I understand that Anna Jay is very pretty. But you know what? If they both didn't get in, you know, two women with zero wrestling experience, really, for all intents and purposes, in comparison to your Io Shirai's of the world and people like that, and even Hikaru Shida, you know, when you always give them offense, when you give them time, then what does it mean for Penelope Ford when she gets the same amount of time? And I just, it doesn't make anybody stand out. And we're set, we're having to see the women's division in AEW because of them not bringing in experienced women and them not having a whole lot of them, I guess, at their disposal. You know, we're seeing them kind of learn on the fly. And I'm not in love with that. 
you know, you're on national TV every week. So to me, you need to, to accentuate your positives every time out. And Nyla Rose should be killing people. And Hikaru Shida should be, I don't want to say killing people, but she should be a dominant force of a champion. Penelope Ford should be on the rise. She should be on the come up. Absolutely. She should, you know, give, get in a little bit of offense. And I thought, you know, the match I thought she had with Sheeta last week, I thought was good. It just, to me, it went a little bit too long. And I thought Sheeta could have, you know, again, Sheeta needs to, some, some big W's and, and not just the 15 second ones that were done to get to, to her too. You know, what, what Nyla Rose had last night, a good two minute performance where she just gets, you know, maybe somebody gets in a fist on her or something like that, but she blocks it and then does all of her stuff. And it's a nice showcase because, you know, frankly, wrestling fans in this country, even though AEW, hardcore AEW fans know her, who knows what Hikaru Shida is all about? What does anyone know really about Hikaru Shida? And so I, I think you can accentuate their positives a little bit more. I know everybody's thirsty to see some of these women on, but I think you can do a little bit more with it. And you know, bringing in an awesome Kong, I think, would just help everybody. Even if you don't use her as a manager like Ken would like to do uh, with Nyla Rose. It, and as far as I, there is one thing I didn't like last night, and we'll have to see where it goes. Taz bringing back the FTW title to give it to Brian Cage now. Unless this is, again, I, I could comprehend this if Moxley, they were going to do something where... Taz thought Moxley got screwed out of the title next week, and then that would make it two in a row, and that would be enough of, an, of a reason for him to bring back this FTW title that he brought out because Shane Douglas wouldn't face him. You know, I get it that Moxley wouldn't face him, but everybody knows what the deal is, and everybody knows the fight is next week. So why would you debut the belt now? That I really didn't, I didn't get, but because it's AEW and... Uh, I'm going to give him a little bit of time, and I'll give him a little bit of space and a little bit of rope. Not as much as Dave, but I'll do it. We'll go ahead and put a bow on this thing. We get back. Wrestling Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Live. If you're waiting for a tweet for, from Brian about ratings, they may be actually delayed till tomorrow because of the holiday. And God knows why in 2020 we have to wait a day because there was a holiday in the united states when all of this stuff which is done electronically uh, well, regardless <sighs> dom what did you say dom yelling in my ear he just tweeted them who did brian did that's yeah. son of a bitch wait, wait. Why do I have to do this all on the fly? Now I'm going to sound like Brian. Where are you to help me with this? Where are you to whisper in my ear during the break? Hey, Brian just tweeted out the uh, the numbers. Uh, NXT, 759,000 viewers. AEW, 715,000. Oh, my. Oh, my. Another win for NXT. But what are the main numbers? What are the 18 to 49s? That's what we all need to hear. That's what we all need to fight over. Where are the 18 to 49 numbers here? Twitch homies, help me out here. Who's got these numbers? Because Brian won't do it. Give it to me. Somebody. Come on. 0.28 against an 0.20. So NXT, once again, uh, takes the L when it comes to the all-important 18 to 49 demographic. But another win overall 44,000 <laughs> viewers separate these two brands. And by the way, folks, those numbers will probably change. Uh, Percentage-wise, they may not, but those numbers will change because of everybody that had the other show on DVR that they watch later on and, and after it. So there you go. NXT gets the W. I got the W, too, because nothing burned down in the time that Brian was gone and I was doing this show. So I want to thank everybody out there for joining me, and hopefully you will all join Filthy Tom Waller and I right here on twitch.tv backslash F4W video after the UFC 251 show on Saturday night. And remember to join Brian and Jim Valley tomorrow right here, 3 p.m., Wrestling Observer Live. Salute.